So patients who um, present with symptoms in the throat, uh, secondary to reflux, sometimes called LPR, laryngopharyngeal reflux, sometimes known as silent reflux, this, these can be the most difficult group of patients to treat. And there are a number of reasons for that. The first is that these patients, frequently they experience symptoms confined to the throat. So these kind of symptoms will include uh, a persistent sore throat, a lump in the throat, problems with the voice, throat clearing, cough, a whole host of symptoms which can sometimes be difficult to pin down and they frequently occur in the absence of any of the typical heartburn reflux type symptoms. So they'll have been back to see their GP perhaps several times, they may then have been referred to an ENT surgeon, they may have been diagnosed with reflux but just given ever increasing doses of PPIs, antacid medications. Um, then perhaps they'll have been to see a gastroenterologist Sometimes if they've got respiratory symptoms, they might even have been to see a respiratory physician, but they never get a real solution to their problems. And the reason for that is that the antacid tablets, the PPIs, very often don't work. In fact, in patients with purely LPR symptoms, um, they work perhaps in only 25% of patients. Now, the reason for that still remains a little bit obs obscure, and we're still not entirely sure, but we think that's because very often the LPR symptoms are caused by non-acidic reflux, reflux of other substances apart from just acid up into the throat. Sometimes it's thought in an aerial sole eyes like a spray coming back up and that can include substances from the stomach including pepsin uh, which is a very irritant enzyme. So well, that probably explains why these patients do not experience relief for their symptoms from uh, from the antacid tablets. So they enter, very often these patients, a cycle of frustration and they, they have been unable to um, actually receive a, a clear treatment plan even if the diagnosis of reflux is clear. So I think this is why the multidisciplinary team approach to um, reaching a diagnosis and agreeing a treatment plan for this group, group of patients is so important. Um, firstly, making the diagnosis can be very difficult and it requires the input of specialists um, with uh, different interests. So as part of our team, we have specialists who are, uh, um, have particular expertise with regard to the throat, uh, but also physiologists um, so that we can uh, work together to establish a clear diagnosis, including the measurement of non-acidic as well as acidic reflux. But I think it's also important to, to note that um, reflux can exist, coexist with other, uh, you know, with other conditions. So sometimes patients, for instance, need to see a, a voice therapist. Uh, sometimes they will need uh, treatment of a primary respiratory problem because asthma uh, can coexist with reflux. Reflux may exacerbate the asthma or the asthma may be the primary condition. So we need to work together to make sure that we come up with the best treatment plan. And sometimes that treatment plan will include surgery and we now know uh, from experience that if we can identify patients in whom we are confident reflux is the cause of their symptoms and having excluded other uh, potential problems that we can with a good degree of confidence say to patients with LPR we've got a solution which is likely to solve your problem. So we, we see we've now treated many patients with LPR uh, with link surgery um, with great success.